<clears throat> so we're starting from the top. Uh, what's your full name and your occupation? And so can, my, you, and can you also give me your birthday? I, I contact with you or? With me. Okay. All right, all right. Um, name? Occupation uh -huh. and your birthday. Okay. Uh, my name is Brian Renteria. Or actually, I'm Brian Joseph Renteria. I am an ed, actually I'm in education. I'm currently an assistant principal. And my date of birth is 5870. And where do you work right now? I currently work with Fort Worth ISD at the newly renamed Dunbar Middle School that has acquired the name JK Middle School. Okay, thank you. And where did your family live before coming to Fort Worth, whether that was here in the U.S. or somewhere outside the U.S.? Well, my family, which two generations prior to myself, came from Mexico. And from what I understand, they came over in 1908 and to establish part of South Fort Worth. Okay. Do you remember what part of Mexico they came from? I do believe that the part of the family that I'm currently most in contact with is from Aguascalientes. Okay. And, and then they came directly to Fort Worth from Mexico? Uh, correct. Okay. Correct. As I understand it, yes, sir. So you're part of a pioneering family? Oh, yeah. Yes. Great. Yes. And um, let's see. Do you, you, don't, you wouldn't know what city in Aguascalientes, would you? No, nah, no. Okay, Can just I, wondering, just wondering. I haven't uh, gone back far enough myself to make that connection. But and I plan on doing What neighborhoods did your family live in and grow up in and yourself? Yeah, so my family uh, grew up in South Fort Worth next to North Texas Steel. My great-grandfather was actually the second house. to He actually built the second house in that neighborhood. And so uh, for anybody from Fort Worth or familiar with the area, it would basically be uh, just north of... Um, it would be Seminary, where the current Grand Plaza Mall is. Used to be Town Center Mall, and then before that, it was Seminary South Mall. But about three or four blocks north of that, there's a street called Path that was on the north boundary of the Church Immaculate Heart of Mary. And my great grandfather built a house there in that neighborhood. Okay, so your grandfather built one of the first houses, one of the first houses uh, to the community that rose up next to the steel mill. Correct, okay. the second second house, from what I understand. Uh, what schools did you attend before you attended this high school? Yeah, so for myself, my family had its roots in South Fort Worth, but uh, part of, you know, looking to grow and evolve, I attended what was part of the magnet program for the Fort ISD, so actually I attended schools in the Northside area uh, for middle school and high school. So I was at J.P. Elder Middle School and Northside High School. Okay, and um, where did you go to college? Uh, college, well, that's another story. <laughs> Keep it simple, but uh, ultimately I graduated from uh, Texas Wesleyan University. Uh, spent some time at TCC, UT Arlington in my undergraduate studies. And then for my master's degree, I actually went back to the University of Texas at Arlington. However, they have a satellite campus in uh, downtown Fort Worth at the Santa Fe campus. So that's where I received my master's of public administration. Okay. And um, can I have your parents' name? Sure. Their occupation? Uh, my father is Richard Renteria, and he was in international sales for uh, a company in the plastic pipe industry. And then my mother was, or is, uh, Josephine Alvarado, and she was in retail sales with uh, Sanger Harris, which then became Foley's, and recently finished as Macy's. Okay, and uh, is she still working there, or is she retired? I retired about maybe, maybe a year now. Okay. Yeah. So just barely. And um, I skipped one question, but um, what churches did you attend here in Fort Worth? Uh, the church I grew up in was the Macla Heart of Mary. With my you know family being in that neighborhood, that's where you know our family had ties. So I grew up in the Macla Heart of Mary Catholic Church. Uh, my wife uh, spent some time in St. George with her family. So. Being a part of the family, you know, we will attend St. George, but we got married at St. Patrick's Cathedral downtown, so okay. that's where we uh, are currently parishioners. Okay. Uh, how many siblings do you have? One sibling. One sibling? Yeah. Okay. Older or younger? She's an older sibling. Okay. And what's her name? Her name is Brandy uh, Gonzalez. And she lives here in Fort Worth? Fort Worth as well, yeah. Let's see. Um, can you tell me about any community organizations you've been in? church organizations and roles you've had in these organizations? Right. Uh, growing up, I was an active part of our church there at Immaculate Heart of Mary. I uh, started as an altar boy. 
And then from there, I became uh, an usher, spent some time ushering, you know, for the church and had a chance to become a lector as well. So reading some of the, you know, readings and then also was a Eucharistic minister for a time. And then from there, uh, being involved in college, I was the president of my fraternity. And that kind of, you know, opened me up into some leadership capacities. Uh, I was What's the name of the fraternity? Sigma Lambda Beta. Yeah. At UTA? At UTA, yes. So, um, you know, there was an honor to be in that capacity and, and grow. And so when I graduated, I uh, wanted to be more involved with the community. You know, felt like it was where my heart was, is to, you know, grow the community. I was uh, fortunate enough to be a board of director for Casada High School uh, for a time. I uh, was on the Human Relations Commission for the City of Fort Worth for a little while as well. Uh, participated on a marketing committee for, at the time, what was the Albert Galvin Health Clinic. Uh, so that was part of my foundational pieces, being involved with some of the other organizations and just attending events. It uh, sparked a passion for uh, supporting young Latino males. So I partnered with uh, someone who had a similar passion, and we established what is called Men Advancing New Opportunities, MONO. And so last spring, we officially received our 501c3 status with the federal government. And um, wh who's the person that you established this MONO with? Uh, his name is Serafin Garcia. And actually, pardon me. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, his name is Serafin Garcia, and he recently received his doctorate. And so his uh, studies was also in the development of the young Latino male in the education system. Okay, from UTA? Uh, he actually received his uh, doctorate degree from, I believe, UTA, yes. Okay. Yeah. And um, have you had anyone else who's been influential in your life or who you've really uh, collaborated with in this work you've done? Uh, to say uh, influence, uh, definitely there's been some of the local leadership, you know, that uh, even though maybe there wasn't a strong collaboration, just seeing that they themselves were pioneering for, you know, the youth, the leadership of Latinos. So, you I mean, you would have to, you know, the ones I guess would be relevant to my generation would be, uh, you know, now Justice of the Peace, Sergio De Leon. Prior to him, Justice of the Peace, Manuel Valdez. Uh, you know, of course, current mem city council member, uh, Sal Espino, who's been a support of mine as well and helping me develop. And then also Mr. Jacinto Ramos, the current fourth SD school board president, has been a major uh, contributor to what we're doing, as well as being someone as uh, taking a role of a mentor. And really all of the gentlemen I previously mentioned, I could say have been open to uh, mentoring myself, as well as some of our, uh, you know, next level of leadership that's coming through. So it's good to hopefully have a continuum of leadership for the community and that they've been willing to invest in us and uh, give us a chance to, uh, you know, kind of step into some roles to support their efforts as well as grow ourselves. Can you give me a little bit more information of what MANO is and what it, what it, what it does for young men? Yeah, so MANO is basically, it could be so many things, and that's the hard part because it's foundational. And so with a lot of the gaps that are currently uh, facing the young Latino male in our society, you know, the desire is to eventually fill all those gaps. But as we acquire our resources and grow our networks, that's kind of where we're taking the direction of filling the gaps that are, are not, you know, in front of us. So one of those being, uh, we recently finished what was called Camp Mono. Over the summer, we collaborated with TCC to uh, allow the students an opportunity to uh, collect the continuing education credit. And so they had a certificate of completion. It was a three-day event. Uh, we wanted to talk with the students and help them to open themselves to understanding the male role within society, uh, the concept of what it is to be a male, how we function as men in society, as well as then looking at culture on a large scale, and then understanding how owning your culture and embracing your culture will allow you to develop uh, your leadership. And so we took that and rolled it into the leadership third day and culminated with the overall concept of Camp Mono. So that was a foundational and an inaugural piece for us, and we look forward to continuing with that. We worked with about 25 students that were in the age group from basically uh, sixth to sixth grade to freshmen, but the majority of the students were seventh and eighth grade students. Okay, well, thank you for that. And <clears throat> well, I'm not sure if Dr. Trockwell told you, but the TCU or 
history program that is involved with this mm-hmm. um, program uh, focuses on black and brown relations in Texas, especially especially having to do with civil rights. Okay. I'm not sure if you've had, what's your relation, personal, the relations you've seen between Mexican Americans and African Americans in Fort Worth, or in Mano if possible, right. and you've learned anything? Uh, you know, I think on a personal note, it's one of those things to where I'm starting to be more aware of those relationships. You know, seeing society evolve and support the civil rights movement with the African American community kind of being the ones that stepped up to pioneer and champion those causes and collectively include the Latino. I feel it's a situation where, you know, we've had some benefit from their efforts. However, we have some unique efforts within our own community that still need to be championed and pioneered as well. So uh, while they have an opportunity to grow the concept of civil rights, uh, it's such a large, um, large umbrella that uh, there, you know, is an opportunity for the Latino to still step up and have further growth within that umbrella. So as far as the collaboration, I'm starting to see more of it. And I think it has a lot to do with just the work that had been done previously in generations and helping bridge the gaps for 